Hi, uh, this is another IAS Infinite Ammo Syndicate one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. I don't think we've done one in a while, or at least I haven't done one in a while, and I've been like pretty much begging Ren to do one. Uh, but finally, I have somebody to do a one-on-one -on -one with, and it's on a beta that we just played, the Project Resistance beta, and I'm joined here with Devil Hunter James. How's it going, folks? So, um, just right off the bat, we're, we were actually going to make a doc for this, but then James suggested we just go right off the cuff, so I was like... I feel like our yeah, thoughts come not? out better when they're not restricted to one question in a certain way, kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Just, just, so, just bullshit about it. It's easier. <laughs> well, yeah, don't don't bullshit about how how you feel about oh, it. Oh, no, be no. Honest about it, I just mean shoot the shit about the game. I'm not really going to do anything too restrictive. Hmm. So uh, right off the bat, because um, I kind of wanted to just get the, um, the overall thoughts of the game, like right out of the way and kind of talk about the more like lore and like fun stuff uh after the fact uh overall what did you think of the beta i think it's pretty fun so far um i think the re fans need to calm the fuck down and not have knee-jerk reactions the second something different pops on the screen because that's like their favorite thing to do mm -hmm. um overall thoughts uh the only issue i have with it i guess would be the way the mastermind works I think he's a little too good, because yeah, like especially if you can, if you control a zombie, man, you can wreck their whole shit. It's one thing For with sure. Mr. X, but if you have like um the tough security zombie or whatever it's called, you can wreck their whole team. I would say the security zombie, and then also the berserker, because like the one thing that I noticed, like I know you got like um on one of your first runs for that was like, my first run. A. I slaughtered them. Yeah, I got an S rank, and what I what I was doing was like I was just putting like three or four zombies in like one little hallway, you know, or like around the corner, or I would like start spawning in like a bunch of like traps behind the zombies. I'd start spawning mm -hmm. the dogs and stuff like that. Like traps are always um, fun. What was what else was that? There was also the um, I don't know if you use this, but they had the uh, the pheromones or whatever to make the uh, zombies go like more berserk. No, I didn't use that. Um, yeah, that is basically like, um, it's kind of like uh, Operation Raccoon City where you had like the pheromone grenades or whatever, and that would like get the zombies to go into like, uh, I think the mechanic in that game was called like Blood Frenzy. Uh, similar me mechanic, except for they call it uh, Berserk Mode or uh, Berserker uh, in this game. Mm -hmm. And uh, you, you basically just kind of like how you're firing the machine gun off of the uh, cameras, you're just firing like, uh, like clouds of gas into the zombies and they get more like aggressive and I think they might deal some more damage. The only thing I thought was uh, a little busted was the machine gun. Mm -hmm. Machine gun's kind of dumb because you could use it whenever and I think it has a cooldown. And as far as I'm aware, the only way to stop the mastermind when they're doing shit like that is to break the cameras. But then the cameras either... are not, um, the cameras don't go away forever either. Yeah, you either have to shoot down the cameras or hack them. And shooting them down isn't always viable because from what I've noticed, uh, a lot of the guns seem to fire like really slow by comparison to like the RE2 remake because so far the only guns that we have, they're pretty much all the guns that we've gotten in RE2 remake. And if you're used to how they fire in, in that game, it, it's going to throw you off when you jump into Project Resistance and, and notice that some of the guns are, like, firing a lot slower than what you're used to. I think the only one that kind of maintained its speed was the uh, the Colt Classic. Yeah, the, the single-action revolver is really good, actually. Mm. Yeah, because that was the one that was, like, you, you could literally you just could speed just fire it. Fan, fan the... What is it called? Fan the hammer? forgot what the term is. Uh... Yeah, where you're basically it's like cow slapping cowboy the fucking style, hammer. You know. Yeah. Yeah, that gun is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. I wanted to try out the lightning hawk, but I did. We didn't uh, survive the timer. That was the other complaint I have. I think the timer's too short. Like the total time needs to go up by like an extra ten or five minutes. I think the timer the timer is double edged from what I noticed. 
Uh, and, and here's also, this is actually one problem I did have with the beta too, and you might have noticed this problem too when playing as the survivors, was that uh, when you're playing with your your teammates or whatever, um, if your teammates are not like getting the keys and shit and, and coordinating well, yeah, they're wasting time. You're gonna be, you're gonna, like, I've seen people literally just run around not getting into the light to exit and waste time. And, you know, like you said, the timer feels like it, it might be short, but I think part of the problem could also be too is that if you're working with really incompetent teammates and I, I think we're both on the same page with like just working with randoms like playing with randoms is never fun because you can never coordinate with them in most cases yeah that's an unfortunate side uh, effect of the beta is we could not invite each other there's no party system yet. yeah so that's that's one loaf i have to give it yeah th that could possibly change in in the open beta. It, it will we don't know. I, I have full faith uh, it will but um you know just just bringing that up though it's like uh you know and and keeping that in line with the uh, the timer stuff it's like i i think with a well coordinated team the timer could be like the most irrelevant thing i think because you'll probably rack up like quite a bit of time mm -hmm. um cuz the big problem is like like i said if you're not like coordinated like you're you're gonna lose out on time because people are gonna be separated and dying. And granted, you do have to separate a little bit, um, not as much as like the outbreak games, from what I've noticed. But then again, it's it's only like a few small areas, uh, with really only one big area in level three. I that's as far as I, I got, got to so area far. two. My team wasn't too uh, too smart trying to find the last key, and Mister X showed up and he uh, he delivered it to us. See, 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 I was in the uh, the part where you have to break the uh, the containment things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure you've seen. Yeah, that I think that's the, it because uh, the, the tutorial the demo. tutorial shows you. I think that is the final stage: is you break the container and you leave. Yeah, because that that's as far as I've gotten. And uh, you know, when you have teammates that are wasting time and not actually breaking that shit, it's like, yeah, you can you can really fuck up. Also, I might as well but, address one concern. Because I saw this in the YouTube comments a lot. People were saying it's overpowered that the Mastermind can spawn zombies next to you. I'm like, yes and no. Because if you, they may have a giant like biohazard portal thing on the ground when they show up. So if it's right next to you, you can just bash they, their brains out before they even get to do anything. They also, um, even though they, from what I noticed, they do have a couple of iframes as they're spawning in. Yeah, but they um, still like. But, they're but they take like inactive. a good like, they take a good moment before they start become active. I like had enough mentioned. time to like bat a dog over the head before I got to do anything. Same with the liquors mm -hmm. when they spawn them. The liquors especially seem kind of easy to kill. Oh yeah, like like literally just fucking kicking the liquors was the funniest shit in the beta. Tyrone must <laughs> be uh, Josh's son because he has the power kick. Oh no, you gotta. Um... You gotta play as uh, Sam too, cause Sam will like punch all the zombies and shit. That was pretty fun. Um, but yeah, I, I think like we're we're both in agreement that for the most part, it's it's a pretty fun beta. I would um, say this is the best side game for Resident Evil Capcom has put out in forever. Cause what do we have? ORC that game sucks. Uh, the hell else do we have? Uh, Umbrella Corpse, that game isn't good either. Like, it, Capcom's been on a pretty shit string of uh, we, bad side games for Resident so, Evil as of late. So, side games, like, side games that really change the formula or don't really stick with the formula, yeah, I mean, we, we've had ORC, ORC being outsourced, um, but then again, so is Project Resistance, but Project Resistance is being done by the team that was working on a lot of their, um, more recent hd remasters uh, remasters uh they're known as neo bards entertainment um mm. but it's it's essentially yeah like orc umbrella core or corpse whichever you prefer i would prefer corpse because it's it was dead on arrival um i mean you technically could count the revelation series because that's that's a side series yeah but they're like they're uh, like triple a non-indie non side games as well 
Mm, oh, I don't yeah, count. I, I do not count ORC as AAA. That game does not play like a AAA game. Oh, or, at all. ORC was outsourced to a uh, mediocre. What was it? Slant Six. Slant Six. Yeah, and uh, you know the the team that gave us SOCOM Confrontation, which I heard was one of the worst SOCOM games to have ever come out. I've never played that game, but I've was that seen the one that came out it? during the PS3 uh, apocalypse? No, actually, you know what? I think Possibly. I don't think so because hardly I, anybody got to play that game. I all I know is that that SOCOM Confrontation was it was the no you're thinking of SOCOM Four, but oh um, yeah, you're right, you're right. SOCOM Confrontation was the one where it was it was an online only um, SOCOM game, and a lot of the, actually, believe it or not, a lot of the animations from that game are in ORC. So. Um, but that's beside the point. Um, other like other like RE spinoffs. I mean, like we don't we don't really get that stuff. Um, I mean, at, at most, I think outside of that stuff, we had Mercenaries 3DS, and that was about it. So not not a whole lot. Like yeah, that was maybe that's like much earlier it. in the PS1, PS2, and uh, maybe Dreamcast era. Yeah, but. Oh yeah, I figure we should address since you bring up Neo Bards. Uh, the other thing I wanted to get off the table is I don't know why the Resident Evil fandom has this stupid thing where they think Capcom is taking resources away from Resident Evil Three and RE Eight by working on this when they aren't even making the game. Well, like I feel like people are just too lazy to get their damn facts straight. That and, and I would also say that's kind of a um, that's kind of a dumb assumption. Because I've seen it a really lot. Think it's about really it. annoying. I, I would say it's also uh, it's also a really dumb thing to say or, or think about. Because because also something too to consider is that like let let's just say hypothetically Capcom didn't outsource this game and they did it in house. Okay, well we're getting a RE spinoff that you you guys do realize that. They have more more than just the one team to work on Resident Evil. I mean, when nah, what was it back in 2012 when we got ORC Revelations and RE6? Um, all three of those games were being developed by three different teams, and they were all coming out in the same year. So I'm I'm just saying. And then uh, I think it was like I want to say like Revelations Two was just about to come out when they uh or had it had already come out uh right about the time that they had announced re2 remake and they were also working on re7 those two games were being developed simultaneously practically but um you know one release before the other so i i think it's a really dumb thing to just assume that that you know if they were to work on this game in-house that they would have taken away resources from re3 remake yeah. If anything, if anything, and I don't mean to cut you off and ramble on, uh, anything that we get from this game, they could probably apply like texture wise and asset wise and, um, you know, other mechanics possibly into RE3 remake. Like I could definitely see them carrying over the, uh, the uh, uh, what is it, the yellow herbs and like the uh, traps and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So. We're still going, right? Nope. Oh, there, oh I there think we I go. disconnected. It fixed I think it. I okay. disconnected. Uh, if everyone's wondering what the hell just happened, uh, Discord's being a little funny today, and it just fixed itself now. Okay. I was asking you um, before I, I got, heard. Uh, you asked about the sharing ammo, right? Yeah, the shared ammo, things like the yellow herbs and like other types of mechanics. Uh, I didn't get like to use a yellow herb, but uh, for the shared ammo stuff... That could be a bit busted too, in its own way, because you can buy a friggin' lightning hawk, and it's mm. not that hard to rack up like sixty bullets, and sixty bullets in a magnum is ridiculous. Oh yeah. So, I don't know how that's gonna play. I didn't get to experiment too much with the other guns. I the, my favorite gun so far was the revolver, but uh, I, it, it has a potential to be busted. But I need to mess around more and see. From what I was able to tell, um. 
it, it seemed as though like if you were using like the shotgun for example it used like say like twice as much ammo for the reload that might so be a way to balance you... it out maybe the magnum uses so like it doesn't four show five. you n not in your inventory but like when you have the gun equipped it'll show you like how much ammo you have to reload with it yep yep so i think that's a little bit weird and i would I don't know personally. I would kind of prefer just having like separate each ammo. individual ammo. Yeah. Um, I do like that they redesigned the like ammo crates though to have like the little umbrella logo. That well, yeah, because you're basically in a basically yeah everything you're in is umbrella. umbrella. Yeah. Yeah. Did you mention the uh, Easter egg thing already? Mm -mm. You might as well. I was going to, but I wanted to talk about the uh, the yellow herb and actually just herbs in general. Go for it. Um, so uh and you you you've probably noticed this too. Uh so you have green herbs, you have blue herbs and you have yellow herbs. No sign of the red herb, but I assume that that's going to be in the full game. Um bit of a bit of a weird exclusion, weird. but yeah, probably. Yeah, probably. yeah some it's weird though cuz it's like um kind of a staple yeah, herb in the series. Yeah, it's like of, of all the herbs to get rid of. I mean, like I understand like why they got rid of blue. A little confused by why they got rid of yellow after four, but uh, I'm I'm happy it's back. Um, but I will say it. What I don't like is it doesn't. From what I can tell, at least in the beta, you can't combine herbs. So if you wanted to do a, a green and blue or a green and yellow or a mix of all three, you can't do it. Um, yeah, that the combo mechanic isn't there. So I guess it remains to be seen if it's. Something that's coming later or not? Later or not. Uh, I have no idea. Yeah, yeah that, that's something I hope they address um, because I would rather have like uh, combined like combined herbs and stuff like that because like standard do... standard Resident Evil fanfare. Yeah, because I do think like the the health system is kind of weird, and I'm not sure if you noticed like you you got your health bar and it actually shows it at all times. Yeah, they're uh, having a health bar is kind of a bit. Thing. It's it's fine. It's not a big deal. It's just a little mm. odd since Resident Evil is either you know it's usually the uh, status of the character instead of having a literal showing like a health bar or anything like that. Well, I mean, you still got the status too. It's just it's um, I would say it's kind of more like like what if they took the health bar that we've seen in like you know classic RE plus RE two remake mixed in with um resident evils four five and six yep where you kind of see it in the bottom corner um that was fine it's just that i felt like the the damage and then like this kind of goes back to when we were talking about the um the enemy balance and stuff like that like it just seems like when you take damage and stuff you you take quite a bit so it'd be really nice if you could just combine herbs and uh you know maybe have like um you know, like resistance to damage for a bit, or or uh, certain like buffs, like kind of like uh, in RE2 remake. If you do just blue and red, you can get uh, poison resistance for a temporary amount. I'm trying to uh, think of what else I would even add into this game now. Actually, no. You know, we haven't talked about hmm? uh, the fact that uh, Daniel, the the you know mastermind you see for the marketing, isn't the only one. There's probably more than one mastermind. Yeah, actually. Um, so, so I mean, Daniel is so, something to point out, too, is that when you look at Daniel's clothing, that kind of is a dead giveaway that he's not the mastermind that they showed off in the trailer. The mastermind they showed off in the trailer was wearing a bl all black suit. And Daniel seems to be wearing like, I, I think he was wearing like a, dog tag like a military dog tag and uh um just like a regular old jacket and a black shirt um and if you read the file on him too in the game they they don't mention them by their full name but they allude to alex wesker so there's a chance that both weskers are in the game if not just the one um but I assume that they're going to take a similar approach to the survivors where certain masterminds might be able to spawn certain enemies and have certain perks only exclusive to them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What, what do you think about that? Well, at least it gives me a reason to pick the others. Like, I bet um, Mr. X isn't the only trump card uh, character. At least I would hope so. Mm -hmm. 
I feel like he's Daniel specific Trump card, unless you could pick and choose in the full game, like, because there is a little loadout thing for all the characters, both the survivors and the mastermind. So I'm wondering if you can change what your ace in the hole uh, enemy is. Oh, I could see it. Um, I could definitely see them doing, taking the approach of like, um, so you know how like like a lot of online games now they do like se seasonal updates and stuff like that. Um, and you know how Capcom pretty much said that they wanted to focus on the online aspect first before delving into like single player offline aspects. Yep. Yep. Uh, I could definitely see them updating the game like every so often to include uh you know potentially like new characters masterminds and uh enemy types including boss types um and and one in particular because i was just talking to nemesis uh, via dms about this too um it seems like they might be alluding to an re3 remake so imagine nobody saw that coming yeah <laughs> Well, no, they're like alluding to it more so, or like teasing that. Oh, yeah, it's it's like actually in the works now. Uh, we're just giving you project resistance to kind of hold you off and and give you something to play while you wait for for that remake. Um, give it to me now, Dom. Even though RE two hasn't been out for just, a year, even. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it hasn't been a year. It, what it came out back in January, tail end of January, yeah. tail end of the January, beginning of this like, year. I'm like, bro, this shit's not gonna come out for at least. Three years, I would estimate. So maybe two, maybe would, two, since they already have some assets. I would say it would take less time, and I know we're kind of diverting. It would take less time to get the RE3 re remake compared to how how much time we had to wait for RE2 remake. They already have a base. It will take some time, but it won't take as much. Yeah, like they already have the RPD. That's done. It's there. All RPD they do is mess and with also stuff. the also some of the city streets too. Yep, they just so, they would just basically turn the outside and when you're in the beginning of Resident Evil 2, you know how you're in the city uh, before you go yeah. into the RPG. That would be RE3, just a big city. Yeah, that and and that's also why I was saying too they could easily take like some textures and assets from Project Resistance and apply that to that remake. Um, but anyway, uh, going back to like the the seasonal thing that I was talking about, so. I, I could definitely see them adding in like Nemesis as like a playable like oh, God. Uh, boss that you have to, to fight or something like that. You think or, like, Mr. X is bad? Uh, yeah, if you thought Mr. X was bad, wait wait till Nemesis comes in to fuck your shit up or like uh I could I could also see like uh the the OG tyrant or like even the proto tyrants from uh remake and RE Zero coming into play. I think that stuff would be pretty cool to see. Um and, and of course, I think like not just tyrants, because just being able to play as tyrants would be kind of boring. Because then it's just like, oh, it's just a different tyrant, and they pretty much do the same thing. Possibly, what if we got other enemy types, and you know, we just have to. I hope they have hunters. Out. Everyone likes the well, hunters. Hunters would be fun. I think hunters. Would I want to control fun. a hunter so I can decapitate people. Oh yeah. <laughs> I don't <laughs> think they're gonna have that, that much really gore fun. in the game, but it would still be nice. Or at least make them have some sort of instant kill if you're at half health. Yeah. Um, and since I kind of talked about it, uh, how do you feel about them putting in the little Easter egg of uh, the save save room themes in some of the uh, safe rooms? I didn't notice it at first. And then you mentioned, like, oh, yeah, they did have some calming music when you kind of weirdly scooch into the door. I, I thought it was a glitch at first. Because the door, like the yeah. vault doors, are, like cracked, so you like you yeah. slide through them instead of like opening the door. So I was like, okay. Yeah, it's a it's a weird change, but I kind of understand why they did that. I mean, um, you know, more I, standard Resident Evil fan fair stuff. Yeah, well, what safe the, the what safe area too, doesn't have a calming you know a calming uh, theme to it? No, I, I meant the animation to go into the door, not not the. That was weird. Thing. I didn't see that coming. I I, I, I oh, understand why they the did door. it. Like, cause, cause, could you imagine if somebody summoned out Mr. X and then all of a sudden they like? Oh no, I, I get why room. it's there. It's the key, you know, the mastermind cannot touch you in that room. Mm -hmm. Thank God. Um, 
No, I, I gotta ask though, do you think they'll add in other save room themes from like the other games, or do you think it's just gonna be the, the first three games and that's it? Maybe just the first three games. I don't see them focusing too much on like extra little touches like that, but I don't know. Could happen. Could happen. Hmm. So wait and see kind of thing, I guess. You never know at Capcom what they're gonna do with that stuff. Yeah. Though I will say they uh, usually are good about uh, making a nod to other games. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, uh, since I was just talking about the Yellow Herb and stuff, like, I would not be surprised if they would try to make some, like, things that allude to, like, RE4 and, and maybe even, like, 5 and 6. Uh, hell, as much as I hate 7, I, I could see them, like, even alluding to that game, too. Just, you know... I, I could see that what I could see them doing is um, they will have um, let, let's just say that they'll have like things that will connect to, to the lore. It doesn't maybe it doesn't have like a direct impact on the like the overall story, but it'll give you like some context on like certain characters and like some other motives uh, for like later games in the series that we've already kind of like experienced um and then i mean it's possible since we already got like a small yeah, biography and then, and then i think like also too just to kind of just for fun uh they'll do like some non-canon stuff too where it's just like oh hey here's like a little event you can you can go through this, these like areas that you you might recognize from um these other re games because why not right Mm -hmm. Actually, that reminds me too. Um, did you notice that the zombie and like some of the uh, like monster uh, artwork? It kind of looks like the stuff that we would see in Teppin. Kinda, maybe it was the same artist. Kinda, maybe it was the same mm -hmm. artist that did it. Capcom seems, to like them and they do Capcom seems to like them, and they do some pretty badass stuff. So I'm not, I wouldn't be too For sure. surprised. Uh, especially their Dante art. Especially their oh, Dante yeah. art. <laughs> yeah. That that one and then uh i think they did two different nero ones as well right they did dmc4 yeah, nero, and nero yeah nero's yeah. nero's more recent so i mean I, I mean i i like it i like the little uh artworks uh for like the zombies and stuff like really cool little detail and i think they move too just like like in tepin they kind of have the phone they kind of have the phone the phone like mobile gif mm -hmm. kind of thing going for them so yeah, they some some of them are animated, some of them are static. Um, but, uh, you got anything else we should add? But uh, you got anything else we yeah, should add to this? Yeah. Uh, so like, inventory space wise, like, did you feel as though like it was fair, or do you think that they should have it closer to like, um, like the RE2 remake? Because I did notice that there was like four extra slots that were like grayed out so it seems like we can get like four more slots and that's it um maybe it's an upgrade you have to find maybe it's an upgrade you have to find during the mission potentially that'd be kind of a weird thing to omit. that'd be kind of a weird thing to omit from the the beta or alpha or whatever it yeah is. It's, it's a closed beta so okay so that means the game is generally done okay so that means the game is generally done then it's just like more networking and probably uh, so yeah things. i i would assume um because this is early october obviously so and, and this beta is going on until the 7th so i would assume maybe they'll do one like an open beta maybe mid-october or late october if not like going into like november and uh december possibly although the thing with november is that if they're doing the beta then like an open beta then that would be probably a better idea i think just because i would give them more time to do some heavy like uh balance and uh balance and tweaks and stuff like that i guess oh you know it's one thing they need to fix oh you know it's one thing they need to fix this because I'm, our resident evil 2 didn't have and it mm -hmm. still annoys me and i know it bugs you why is there no struggle mechanic? Why has Capcom forgotten about this mechanic? I'm going to actually add in another thing, too. 
there's no struggle mechanic mm -hmm. and for those of you that like the aspect of being able to stab your knife or use one of the grenades to make an enemy like get off of you that's not present in the beta uh so def defense items that could be a work in progress who like, knows even though you have defense items you can't like use them the way that you were able to use them in re2 remake and i kind of don't like that either the only one i can understand is the knife the only one i can understand is the knife because you have an infinite knife in this game so that oh, makes sense if you just had this oh i could just keep pushing them for off sure yeah uh the one thing that i noticed too with the infinite knife is that uh certain characters do not use it the same way like, like like yeah, slashing like and stabbing Valerie kind of in particular, thing. she does not use it the way that the other characters use it. She just kind of like, kind of like, cowers a bit and like does like a like half-assed like stab, and she like holds the knife with both hands. It's it's kind of weird. Like it it it. Uh, it, it, makes sense. Uh, it makes sense since they're just a bunch of kids. I don't really expect them to well, be military trained. Like, well, on that's only or partially true because. Uh, I think it's only Valerie and Sam that are like college students, but then the other two characters are like well into adulthood. Tyrone, from what I know, is he? Tyrone, from what I know, is he's uh, he does a standard yeah. slash. I th I Nothing think it's only because it. he's like a firefighter. I think that was like the lore explanation for him is that he he works for the uh, Reckon City Fire Department. Mm -hmm. So it is stuff mm -hmm. like that. Like I I can I can see why. Uh, why they would, you know, maybe have that for certain characters. He's he's more built for the job, basically. Oh, you, you know what? I gotta ask. Uh, did you use any of the other melee weapons? I use the, the bat. I use the bat? the bat. I, yeah. I think it was a metal bat. That was pretty OP. That was pretty OP. The wooden, uh, the, wooden uh, the wooden thing they start you with too. I forgot what it is. Yeah, was. it's just a two by four. It's just a two by four yeah. with some spikes on it. That thing was pretty handy too. Especially for um, if the mastermind decides to be an asshole and try to spawn things on, you could bash them mm. really quick with it. I like how they give. Though it I does like break how they easily. Give the weapons like a like a health bar. Um, because because that was yeah, like that's always handy. Like like playing outbreak, you know, because we've been doing that a lot lately. Um, when you're using the melee weapon, like yeah, sure you have the iron pipe and that starts bending, so you can kind of tell when that's about to break. But some of the other melee weapons, like the um, like the spear and stuff like that, you can't really tell. I mean, sure. And then you also have the broom, which like starts breaking apart and turning into a smaller stick. But it's like, it's it's nice to know how much uh, how much you can use that weapon before it has to get tossed out or repaired. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Uh. Oh, I guess. Uh, you know, here's another thing we could kind of talk about, too. Um, as far as, like, level design is concerned, how did you feel about that? I thought it was okay. I thought it was okay. Uh, Resident Evil's definitely done a bit better. I didn't really get to see the entire mission since uh, I've only gotten to Area 2. I think there's three yeah. areas in total. Uh, I thought the labs look cool, although it's a bit small. I think the thing with the areas is they're pretty small. There's not, it's not very expensive. Uh, maybe, that'll uh, maybe that'll change depending on different locations because the one we did was called Downtown. And that was the only one we were allowed to pick, so I don't know what the others are going to be like. So that's kind of going to be what you see. They're not bad, but they are small. Yeah, that that's might, my only thing with them. That might also be dependent on like difficulty. Like maybe bigger areas have more more levels so it's more difficult but then uh you know it might be more rewarding because i also noticed too that you get points after completing each um each run i don't know what the points are for but i'm assuming it's to i'm gonna bet they're yeah for that's the what i was thinking is like to unlock more of like the perks and stuff um so but it's like even the mastermind has that too. With the, um, I noticed you can buff Mister X, give him extra stuff. I'm yeah. Like, okay, that's ridiculous. <laughs> this thing does not need a buff. This thing does not need a buff. He already can mm, punch out your yeah. whole team. Uh, but what what else was I thinking of too? It's like um, I'm I'm thinking also too. It's like with the uh, the level design, um, 
I thought it was okay. Um, but I do think that there's like a lot of like, there's a lot of potential like for a player to fuck up if they don't know what they're doing with some of it, like some of the, the areas and shit. Because the mastermind, I'm not sure if you noticed, you can actually lock the doors temporarily. Oh, I've done it. Um, oh, I've and, done and it. And I've seen people, like, as the mastermind, they just don't know what to do. They'll just stand there. And um, what I guess a lot of people don't know is that if you hold X, you can actually, like, run into the door and, like, bust it open, which is pretty cool. Um, but that I could see that being something that people also just don't like. Just because it's like, oh, well, you're you're stuck in a room. What, what do I do? And then, you know, the mastermind starts spawning in like four or five zombies. Uh, I think when the game's out for a bit, people understand the mechanics. It won't be that big a deal. It's kind of just like day one frustration. I don't know what to do sort of thing. Uh, oh, you know what? Um, as far as like the enemy variety that we've gotten so far how do you feel about it because so far it's just mostly been zombies it's like what do we got zombies dogs and mr x yeah uh yeah ivy and mr x yeah it's so far beta as well so we got like what five different enemies so we got like what five different enemies uh and like some sub sub variants and then they have variants of some of the enemies some mostly the zombies i think there was a they have like semi elite enemies. I think they like they the security guard zombie, for example, is like I think it was called tough security zombie. Something like a, that. So they have also variants like of a the berserker type of enemy. Um, they kind of act like a crimson head, except for they're just a regular ass zombie that just runs faster and beats the shit out of enemies. I like that you can be a jerk and you can uh, spawn. Crawling oh yeah, zombies. The, the crawling zombies are great. <laughs> the one that nobody likes. Yeah, they're great. Nobody likes them. Except yeah, the master. Um Yeah, I just I think like like so far, like overall with the uh, with the enemies, like they're not bad. I, I'm just like and I know it's a it's a beta. They're they're mostly standard from the pre Yeah, it's mostly know, like just game. standard affair type of stuff for like like what we saw in R E two remake, it's like yeah, you you're basically gonna see that. I'm I'm hoping, and I did mention this when they were doing the uh, the survey before the uh, beta signups were beginning, I think, or maybe it was after. Um, one of the things that I had mentioned was that I, I I really hope that we can see a return to, return of um, certain enemy types that we haven't seen in quite a bit from previous RE games, or just how about the stupid moths? How about the stupid yeah, moths? or like. I kind of I'm kind of curious how they would handle flying enemies in that game. I assume they'd just be locked to yeah, a certain and, height. Um, you know, and I mentioned uh, crimson heads earlier. I, I, I was thinking like, you know, what if they brought back the crimson heads because they could just they make could them like a super just make them yeah, like a super yeah, basically elite like something, something that you could just spawn out like very rarely. But when you do, that could like really put the survivors on on a challenge or like, um, like I know you mentioned. Especially if you can, yeah. since you mm. can control like, them. And, and I yeah. know you mentioned the hunters earlier, but I was also thinking like, oh, what if they like uh, went like really back and decided, hey, we're going to bring back the ticks from uh, RE1 from the Sega, Sega Saturn version of oh, the game. Oh, God. Or if they really, really hate us and they look at Outbreak, oh. like, how about the fleet? Yeah, it's like, but, but I mean, like, like yeah, it, those damn things. it would be annoying to deal with, but like, thinking about that like it would be so cool they would be like it, it, it'd be blockers. cool to see though like just just to see them come back like oh i want to see it he bites one of you That's oh yeah it. yeah no he's the, the whole, whole hallway. fucking hallway is just saying like well th thanks for the boost <laughs> thanks for the drink my guy <laughs> um oh god i didn't uh, like i didn't get a chance to try out all the weapons um I did want to try Same. out like the hammer. I think there was also an axe too, if I'm not mistaken. Um, there was. I didn't get to use the Matilda. I, saw that I didn't get to use the Matilda. I saw they had the the Rafika. The, no, the Matilda's the uh, VP. Oh no, 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 never mind. That's, 
Oh no, 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 never mind. That's just, it's, it's, it's just the a one that Leon pistol. Has. I got mixed up because it, when it has the stock, yeah, it's his yeah, gun, but it has the stock on it. That, like, it has the upgrade, so I thought it was a raffle. The, uh, the Matilda... Reason. Okay, I don't know if I... I, I might have mentioned this earlier. I, I don't know if I did, but... Um, you might have noticed this, too. Like, the guns are... Um, they're there, but the stats on them are really weird because they're not the same as they were in RE2 Remake. Like, there were some that were, like... Okay, these are, like, super super strong or whatever but they fire slow like the damn revolver, like the damn revolver. yeah or if you spam like three shots into a zombie's head they're probably yeah. dead already or um like you start off i think if you play as val or, or not valerie as uh as uh january if you start as her uh she starts out with a handgun but it fires like really fucking slow but it hits hard um so it's like shit like that and mm -hmm. i'm hoping i'm hoping that's not a thing of like oh well we're gonna put in some of these guns but we're gonna like change the stats on them because we don't want you to feel like this is like something you could just breeze through because you have three other partners and and i, I don't know like uh, how do you feel about that So, uh wait repeat that oh like i was saying like i don't want it to be a case of like you know certain like stats on like weapons are nerfed or like uh altered oh yeah it's different from like, yeah Resident where it's Evil just like oh it's weaker because you have three other partners i mean i do expect a few things i mean i do expect a few things to be different i'm not i you know i didn't i had no delusions that this game is going to be exactly like resident evil 2 remakes yeah. um gameplay it's similar, but it has a lot of extra For mechanics. Sure, yeah. Um I'm trying to think what else. Oh. Uh we didn't talk about this, but the uh the puzzle, because there's one puzzle you have to solve and it changes every time. There's three different the one Which one to is that? Get through to get through area one into area two, the puzzle changes. So sometimes you have to find trophies. Other times you have to find pieces of the world map, and other times you have to find pieces of uh, Mr. Raccoon. Yeah, Mr. Raccoon was the one I had. Yeah, Mr. Raccoon was the one yeah, I had. Yeah, if do. you, because um, I played it, like, I played through it like four or five times. Um, I died every single time as a survivor, unfortunately, uh, but um, they change the puzzle every single time. Sometimes it it stays the same sometimes it's different um but when it does change it changes like some of the um the puzzle item locations and it also might change the the amount of items you have to grab too like sometimes i think with the uh, the raccoon you only have to grab the leg but then other times it made you made you grab the leg and the arm yeah, and the arm. Yeah, That's the one I had to do. Um, the one with the world map, you have to grab like three pieces of the world map or like um, the trophies. I think you have to find like sometimes you only have to find one trophy and other times you have to find like three trophies or only two trophies. So I, I thought that was kind of interesting. Yep more, standard yep, more standard obtuse weird puzzles from Resident yeah. Evil. Nothing new here. <laughs> Just weird there. shit that you don't know why it's there, but it is. Oh, you want to go to the bathroom? You better find the gem. the the gem that goes into this door slot so you could actually pee. You have to find the gem, and then you also have to find the key, and you have to make sure that it's the right key, because that key. And then there's a piano puzzle that opens the toilet lid. Like, <laughs> yeah. the, you know, that, it kind of Resident Evil. If you actually, if you turn your brain on, Resident yeah. Evil is very weird. I don't know how anybody gets anything don't, done in Don't question City. it. Just, just in, in Resident Evil in general, you get on the everything bus, solve is, a is a puzzle. It's locked behind a puzzle. Don't don't question it. Um, I, I do want to ask, though, like, um, how do you think, like, because you know how, like, with uh, Outbreak, because we've been playing that a lot, um, Capcom, when are you gonna, like, Capcom, when are you going to remaster those, by the way? Maybe. 
Maybe. Seriously. <laughs> Seriously, like, such... They came out ahead of their time, and now they're in a time where they'd be super prevalent. So I don't know why they won't remaster them. They, they yeah, are sleeping I, on I, money. Was, I was going to say, like, because um, cause you know how, like, an outbreak, um, like, we've been playing that a lot lately, and if we do, like, a puzzle or something like that, um, you know, like, if we fuck up, a, fuck up the run, we, we figure out the puzzle later, like, looking up the strats or whatever. But, like, in... In this game, how do you feel like knowing that the puzzle can change per playthrough? How do you think that's gonna like alter the playthrough? I think it keeps it. I fresh. think it keeps it more fresh. So I feel like if you had to do the same exact. So I feel like if you had to do the same exact thing every single mission, it would get a little bit repetitive. So I guess if they're trying to keep it more um, fresh, then that's a good way to do it. Outside, you know. Outside, you know, every mastermind you fight is doing a different person with different ideas. So For sure. That always helps. Uh, I think it's fine. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I think it's fine. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. As long as they're not bullshit puzzles. Like, Outbreak, as much as I love Outbreak, it does have some super cryptic, like, I don't know how you're supposed to figure this out on your own kind of puzzle. And it's worse when you have no friends. And it's worse when you have no friends because they can't help you. Yeah. You're stuck with the AI. Uh, and the... And the AI is uh, not no, that great. Not. <laughs> no, it is not. You do not want to play Outbreak with the AI. They are not helpful. The AI thinks their life is shit twenty four seven. And then I think it was like when when I play or no when we played and we didn't pick like I think it was like Cindy in the Wild Things mission on file two. Like she just stands there, like then she dies. Yeah, she just kills. Then herself, she dies. You know, like so no, no worry. Or the elephant probably yeah. ran just, her over. Don't worry about it. Even though she's just standing there, you know, it's like it's all right. Um, oh, that is one of the things too. I heard oh, that is one of the things too. I heard people saying this, but like, I do not want um, resistance to replace mm -hmm. outbreak as like a side IP for Resident Evil. I would prefer them separately. Like I was telling, we were talking about this way earlier yeah. before we started playing. I think the game should just be called Resident Evil Resistance. There you yeah. go. Simple. Not, not replace outbreak. They not not replace outbreak because they do not play at all the same. Outbreak is completely outbreak different. Is more of, here's a outbreak is more of here's a campaign instead of a multiplayer mm -hmm. match. I, I I think the only thing that could probably work in this game's favor though as just like a little um, nod to outbreak is if they had the characters from from those games playable. I will pay six. I will pay sixty dollars for my Jim Chapman DLC. <laughs> Where is it, Capcom? Well, well, you heard it here. You heard it here. He he wants that Jim DLC. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's it's um. I mean, I get that. Like, I, I part of me thinks that they could rename this as Outbreak, but at the same I really time, hope I really hope they don't. That's gonna at, make at a lot of people mad. At the same time, though. I like like thinking about it too like the way like the tone of Outbreak and the way that those games are set up like it's very different from Project Resistance so so I think that Project Resistance is far more, more arcadey and it's you're not really in an outbreak per se you're it's just more of umbrella being scumbags and testing people yeah. and kidnapping them it's not it's not the same scenario as Oh, things have kicked off in the city, and you just so happen to have survived, and now you need to get out with these other yeah, people. I mean, it's not the same thing. You happen to be like in the the mission that we were doing. You happen to be in the middle of the uh, Raccoon City outbreak. Um, yeah, but now, but you're going into a you yeah. know an umbrella facility. To be basically, my theory is this is all just combat combat data, like you know Resident Evil mm -hmm. One's whole thing was, right? Uh, it's it's to me it comes off as one of those. It's a controlled environment for Umbrella to test their you know all their. You know I'm glad you brought that up because I could also see like um, Nikolai being a mastermind, just for just for the I hell of it. Like God. it doesn't have to be canon. Just just him being there. <laughs> like he has never been killed, right? He has never been um, killed, right? I think. I think at least on the record. canon scenario in RE3 is that he does get away with the combat data, which is how a lot of the um, the viruses and stuff were on the black market, which is what Chris mentions in RE5. 
So I, I think canonically speaking, he does survive. And that's just a plot thread they never touch on. So could have made it Resident Evil 8 plot. Yeah, you could saying. also technically make it's Resident Evil. It you could, could make technically some wacky make that a revelations plot too, because um, they did say they want to focus on like lesser, less used characters in the revelation series. So, oh, you know, what you just gave me an idea. I don't know if you. Uh, this is kind of a side tangent, but uh, why haven't they just made us a, a game where you play as Carlos and his whole mission is to find Nikolai and kill him? Yeah, again, you know, Re Revelations right, am I on the money? Three, like, what, you know, what are they? What are maybe? they waiting on? <laughs> what? Why hasn't maybe. this been done? Carlos and Billy are two never plot characters that have never like had any resolution yep. after the game, and as far as I'm aware, they just oh, disappear. Oh, you could also say that about like um, you could or hunk. You could say that hunk about um, what is it? Fucking. Parker from Revelations 1, and then also uh, Sheva and Josh from RE5, because we don't see them again either. And uh... I find that one only more plausible because, it, well, nothing's mm. happening in Africa as far as like major plot relevance after Resident Evil 5. They kind of they kind of stop most of the problems. They still have to deal with like True. residual and genie and but, stuff like that. Because Wesker fucked Africa you, you bad. You could also think of it as this, where like because the BSAA technically goes around the world and shit, they could be like, I, you I want basically them to come want, over there. I like the way that I see it is like the BSAA is basically Resident Evil's Rainbow Six, but for bioterrorism. You know, like, like that's what basically. I see. Bas yeah, I know we're diverging a bit, but that, that that's what I could see. <laughs> like a bit. Um, but I guess should we, should we wrap up our thoughts about uh, resistance then? I feel like we've kind of yeah, covered. Yeah, I, I can. think for the most part we have. Um, I, I I guess a, on a final note, like, um, since we kind of talked about this, but um, with the game, like. Being as it is, I think we both agreed that it's pretty fun. Um, it, has great potential, but they do it has great potential, but they do need to adjust some stuff. That's mainly my concern. I would say adjust some it. stuff, have certain things added in that are sorely needed, like herb combinations and the struggle mechanic and also defense items. Uh, I, I definitely want to see some, you know, possibly returning enemy types but also new enemy types that are exclusive to this game if, if possible and you know we'll see from there but so far i've been i've been pretty hyped so i uh, you know i i might pre-order i might end up pre-ordering this game and get a day one so how dare you dom how dare you dom not a true I resident mean, evil fan you know like oh yeah, i know I've i know but it's just that. like like, like you know, I don't even have to say. You know what I'm gonna say. Like, you know, I'm gonna say if fandom needs to cool their damn jets and stop freaking out every time it's not a mainline title. Like, holy shit, Jacob. Yeah, uh, I mean, it's not that you know, serious. At, at the end of the day, you know, the only thing fans need to keep in mind is that if they really want outbreak, just uh, keep in mind that that web domain was renewed, so you might get outbreak HD. You just might. Yep, might be another side um, project coming out. Keep in mind that Capcom did say they want to do more HD remasters in the past, and they have kind of done that on and off. Uh, still waiting on my Oni two, uh, Oni Musha two HD remaster. I'm just saying, but you know that's a whole nother topic. But Project Resistance, I I think you know is is for now at least for me is a potential pre order. So, how do you feel about that? I definitely want to play more of the game. I want to see what the full game has versus uh, the demo because I feel like demo is obviously mm -hmm. very lacking. And I'm kind of curious if we'll have more characters for survival because since we have, you know, Mastermind, like there's extras, I wonder if there's other characters that are in the game they haven't mentioned. I, well, one last question. I kind of just want to see where it develops. Yeah, you know, one last develops. question before we, we just completely finish off. Do you think that... If they were to add in new characters, they would have, like... Um, well, so far, we already know they're going to have character-exclusive perks. But, like, what else do you think they could add in as far as, like, character perks and stuff like that that we haven't seen yet? Oh, perks? Well, 
Oh, perks? Like, well, we don't know if they have different things, do they? Uh, or are they they only do. One? They have passive perks and they have active perks. Uh, I couldn't guess. Uh, I couldn't guess. It's Capcom. They're going to make some wacky stuff up. I have no idea, no expectations, so that's mm. that remains to be seen. Uh, but I guess with all that, uh, we will probably be wrapping this up now, so we'll be talking about Project Resistance in the future for sure. I think eventually we'll do like a episodic discussion on it, and uh, maybe even when an open beta comes out, I can uh, talk with Ren and... Uh, a couple of other people that yeah we'll have to we'll definitely have to get yeah i want to get like uh ren and uh brandon on board and maybe we could also invite nemesis just to see what he thinks i think he's been pretty excited about the game too if i'm not mistaken um so we'll just kind of go from there and and see but until then uh this has been another ias one-on-one we will see you all in the next one bye see ya